The Stat Show, coming at you live for an entertaining lesson today. The Stat Show is here to provide you a closer look into the amazing world of statistics, as well as teach you key concepts along the way. Today you will learn how to perform a standard inference toolbox used for a one proportion z-test. Let's get started. One of the main components of statistics and all math classes is to understand what you are looking for in the problem. The first step in the inference toolbox is to identify the population and parameter in the context of the problem. Population refers to the group of individuals you are collecting data from. Parameter often deals with an unknown value that is representing a specific characteristic of the population. In this same step, you will also state the null and alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis is a default theory stating that there is no relationship between the two variables. The alternative hypothesis' purpose is to contradict the null hypothesis by saying the data will be greater than, less than, or equal to the null hypothesis. Hang in there. Step 2 is used to select the correct procedure to use for the test and to verify that the questions meet the conditions to carry out the test. In this show, we will stick with the one proportion Z test. There are three required conditions for the one proportion Z test. First, the sample must be a simple random sample, so there is no bias in the sample. Second, the population must be at least ten times greater than the sample itself. And third, NP and N1 minus P must be greater than or equal to and referring to the number of individuals sampled and P standing for the probability of success. If the conditions are met, then you can continue with the rest of the inference toolbox. However, if the conditions aren't met, then you must verbalize that you are proceeding with caution and that the results are not as accurate because not all the requirements were met. Let's proceed to the next step. In this third step, will calculate your test statistics and find the p-value. The p-value represents the estimated probability that the null hypothesis will be rejected. You also provide a significance level to which you will compare your p-value. If the significance level is not given in the question, the rule of thumb is 5%. Up next, the fourth and final step of the inference toolbox. The last step, number four, combines the other three steps to form a conclusion and relate it to the context of the problem. If the p-value is less than the significance level, then the null hypothesis is rejected, and there is a statistical significance and sufficient evidence that your alternative hypothesis, depending on the problem, is either greater than, less than, or not equal to the null hypothesis. However, if the p-value is greater than the significance level, you will fail to reject and there is no statistical significance. Let's sum up the four-step inference toolbox we learned today. Step 1. Identify the population and parameter, as well as state the null and alternative hypotheses. Step 2. Select the correct procedure for the test and verify the conditions. Step 3. Calculate and find the p-value. Step 4. Conclude and interpret the results into the context of the original problem. Fantastic! Now you know how to successfully carry out an inference toolbox for your AP Statistics class. Now go home and start practicing so you can use this method to solve all the tests on your STAT AP exams. Good luck and thank you for listening to this week's STAT show. Come join us again soon.